Hello, welcome to Flame Mountain Bike. My name is Mick. My name's Will, and we are here in Mount Buller with the brand new Specialized Levo. We brought the new Levo to Mount Buller as a part of the Ride High Country test sessions. Mount Buller is an ideal proving ground for a do-it-all e-mountain bike like the Levo. This place is full of like big rides, massive backcountry adventures, lung-busting altitude, and pretty gnarly technical terrain. Join us for the review as we put this bike through its paces over the next few days in Mount Buller. Yeah, it's good to be in Mount Buller. <laughs> yeah, 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 Look at yeah, this place. Yeah. That's right folks, this is the brand new third generation Specialized Levo. And while it might look kind of similar to the old model, indeed the frame shape is kind of similar and we also have the same suspension travel with a 160 mil fork and 150 mil out back, everything else has changed. There have been big updates to the geometry with some adjustability brought over from the latest Stump Jumper Evo. And we've also got a mullet wheel size set up on the Levo, which allows for much shorter chain stays. There have also been big refinements to the motor to improve both durability and on-trail feel. And combined with the new Mastermind TCU head unit, there is a lot going on with this new Levo. Now we've been testing the S3 size in the new Levo. Mick is 178 centimeters tall, I'm 175 centimeters tall, and this bike has fit us really well. The contact points are plenty comfortable, of course. We've got a great saddle from Specialized, excellent daily grips, and a nice carbon handlebar, but it's really the intuitive handling on this bike that's really impressed us. Of course, the mullet setup has a lot to do with that. The, this is an emerging trend in the e-mountain bike world. We've got a couple of other mullet e-bikes on test, the Canyon Spectral On and the Merida E160. And going to that smaller rear wheel setup is a great way to add agility to what is quite a heavy duty bike. Now, in the case of the Levo, the smaller 27.5 inch wheel allows for a 442 millimeter chainstay length. It's not the shortest out there, but it is 14 mil shorter than the previous Levo, which ran 29 inch wheels front and rear. And on the trail, that does make a big difference to how willing this bike is to tip into corners, particularly at high speed. There's also a ton of traction on this bike from the supple suspension and the grippy tires. Special mention to that Butcher T9 on the front, which has a really sticky rubber compound and it absolutely rips through the corners. There's also improved high speed stability on the new Levo. Specializers move to a 44 millimeter fork offset and the head angle is slacker in the stock setting at 64.5 degrees. However, with an adjustable headset cup, you can change the head angle to 65.5 degrees, or you can go as slack as 63 degrees. There's also a flip chip in the rear chainstay pivot, and that gives you both high and low geometry settings. In total, there are half a dozen geometry settings on this bike, which allows you to tune it for your riding style and terrain. The suspension is another big area of improvement. The Levo does bring on some of the kinematics of the latest Stump Jumper Evo. The overall suspension rate is considerably more progressive than the previous Levo. There's fantastic sensitivity early on, and we've got this big Fox Float X2 shock on here with the massive Evo air can, requires very little force to get the rear suspension moving. It doesn't feel too boggy. We set the damper settings on the lighter side to keep things a little bit more lively, but it does have a very cosseting, supportive feel when you're landing higher speed impacts and bigger jumps. The Fox 38 is also fabulous up front. Initially, we were worried this might be too much fork for this bike. After all, the uh, previous generation Levo did launch with the RockShox Pike on the front of it, but it is a fantastic match for a bike like this, which is so capable. Along with the 29 inch front wheel and the sticky Butcher T9, there's certainly a lot of confidence on the front of this bike for riding really hard on aggressive terrain.
Lastly, we've got to talk about the new motor in the Specialized Levo. This is the 2.2 motor, and it replaces the 2.1 motor in the old bike. Now, it's still manufactured by Broza, and it's still designed by Specialized, and peak torque remains at 90 Newton meters. Even the overall size and shape, and indeed the mounting points, are the same as the old motor. However, the on-trail performance is very different. A lot of this comes down to the new Mastermind firmware, and this is all about reducing those power spikes that the old motor could experience to help provide a more smooth power delivery. There's something about the way you ride, so natural. On the trail, it's really intuitive, it's very smooth, and it's also very quiet as well. Compared to the competition from Bosch and Shimano, this is the quietest operating e-bike motor that we've ridden. Now, to be more specific, there are no clacking noises that you get from the Bosch and Shimano motors. And in terms of the actual whirring and whining from the motor, it's a lot quieter. It's only until you get to those really high cadences where you can actually notice much noise coming from the motor itself. There have also been some other improvements internally. There's a new belt design in the 2.2 motor. Now it's no secret that Specialized has had issues with the belt in the previous Levo. And they say that this new belt, which is wider, stiffer and stronger, does give a longer lifespan. There's also a really neat latch system to get to the charge port and that's got a load of seals and it's all about keeping water out from the area that you don't want it to get into. Then up at the head tube, we've got the new Mastermind TCU display. This is really clean. It kind of keeps that simple, clean aesthetic that Specializers always have with the Levo, but it does provide you with more data. This is the weapon of a Jedi Knight. There are a load of new functions with the Mastermind TCU. You can scroll through various pages and you can also customize what data appears on that screen, depending on what you're after. One of the new features is the live power consumption. This will actually tell you how much power the motor is drawing whilst you're riding it. And the idea here is to actually teach you to ride more efficiently and get more range out of that battery. Speaking of, the battery range is now displayed in a percentage format, and along with that big 700 watt hour battery, you've got a lot of confidence on this bike to head out on those bigger backcountry rides, knowing that you'll be able to get home without running out of juice. Well, that brings a wrap to our Ride High Country test sessions up here in Mount Buller on the caramelized Tandary Hot Nights Specialized Levo. We've had an absolute belter of a time riding in Buller. It's been a while since we've been up here um, and we've been pleasantly surprised with the condition of the trails, how much we love that big mountain riding. Um, we've been super fatigued and hungry at the end of the day. It's very <laughs> satisfying. Um, and yeah, how was your experience in Buller? Yeah, I, I loved it. I mean, it's been a couple of years since I've been here. But as soon as you get out onto the trails, like once you're descending down, is it gang gangs? You know, you're heading down towards uh, Hauka Hart and, you know, going to Stonefly. You just remind yourself of how special this place is and yeah. how good the riding is. Go on, eat it. Oh, that's so good! <laughs> eat it, eat it, eat it, eat it! Um, that said, this was my first time on an e-mountain bike in yeah. Mount Bull. I've been here many times before on regular mountain bikes and the trails are fantastic on any bike, right? But you can ride mm. so much more um, on one of these and you can back it up like big day after big day after big day. Um, and I think in the middle, we went up to Mount Stirling. That was the second day. We went yeah. all the way up to the top. So some awesome adventures that we had and, um, and it's been fantastic. We've had three e-mountain bikes here. So we've had the Specialized Levo, we've had the Merida E160 and the Canyon Spectral On, all mullet e-bikes. That's mm. been really interesting where we've swapped between the two of us mid-ride to get a feel for the different yeah. performance characteristics. The best way to test. Absolutely. Yeah. And the different motors as well. So that's been a really good basis for comparison um, in sort of testing the new Levo. So 
Absolutely fantastic. Can't mm. wait to get back again. Yeah, Buller. As for the Levo though, this is now six years since the original launch mm. and Mick, you've owned basically every Levo over that time. So um, given your experience with the previous generation models, what impressed you about the new bike? It, it is a bike that I'm so familiar with and it was one of those instances where you were just wondering how or where it could be improved. It always felt so natural and smooth to pedal. Mm -hmm. The suspension nice and planted. The frame was lightweight, fit was great. Uh, there's no clutter, there's no gizmos, gadgets, there's no rattle, noise, clutter, mess. It's just a very neat, subtle and very well finished e-bike. And then this one came out. I think this one has taken a massive step forward in a few key areas, which we'll touch on later. But yeah, I mean, I've, I've really enjoyed seeing the progression of this bike and it's been changing from wheel sizes. It came out with a, with a 275 plus mm -hmm. size and then eventually went to 29. And now, we're go now we've gone halfway to 29 and 27. Yes. So it's the mullet now. Yeah, so in regards to the mullet setup with the smaller rear wheel, this is an emerging trend in the e-mountain bike world. Mm -hmm. What do you think of it now that you've spent so much time on the full 29 inch Levo and now you're on this new mullet Levo? What do you think? Yeah, certainly it's, a, it's you can see why manufacturers are doing it. Uh, there's a lot of space constraints around trying to get the rear wheel into a nice uh, position so the bike isn't so long. Mm -hmm. But on the trail, the that you really feel like you can really turn off the back of the bike. Uh, it tips and it turns a lot easier. There's less sort of gyroscopic centrifugal forces going on holding you in a straight line. It's just a little bit easier and more uh, agile and sprightly to ride. Uh, but you don't, I just don't feel like you lack any of that 29er wheel momentum and stability because yeah, you've got one at least. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, it is a, it is a very stable bike. I think yeah. the stability's improved over the previous bike. We're talking about that new geometry, so sort of slightly longer and slacker. Uh, reduced offset fork and a big 29 inch front wheel it can mm. it can haul absolutely but we've also got this big fox 38 we've got a huge float x2 which is a downhill shock yeah. as well yeah did you ever feel like it was too much bike i was concerned reading about it on paper that a 38 and an x2 on a 156 160 mil travel bike would be too much but in the end it wasn't such an issue on the trail. The, the way it's tuned is quite lively and poppy. Uh, the bike is relatively light at just over 22 kilos. Mm -hmm. um, and the mullet wheel setup really helps the live and the ride. So not as over biked as I thought it would be with such big travel. But in terms of the geometry more so, like the extra length, the fact that yeah. the head angle's now slacker as well. Yep. Um, on some of the tighter trails, I don't know about you, but I was finding that I was having to work the bike more especially when I got tired, you know, certainly, like second, yeah. third, fourth day of riding. Um, was that a case for you as well? Yeah, it certainly. It was, it, was, it, was, it was even more evident when we're riding it back to back with the Canyon and the Merida, which are a sharper and shorter mm -hmm. yeah, um, yeah. sort of bike to ride. So the lighter steering and a bit more easy to, easy to manage when you're in tighter and slower terrain. That said though, there is so much adjustability worked into this frame. You've got two adjustments at the back and three at the front, which spit out six variations. And you can make it as sharp and high as the outgoing Levo mm -hmm. with a little bit of a tweaking. It's easy, yeah. Yeah, and I think we were both talking about trying the steeper head tube angle. Yep. So by putting in the offset cup into the minus one degree setting, you can bring that head angle to 65.5 degrees, which would speed up the steering a little bit yeah. and potentially for less steep riding, uh, more kind of undulating stuff, you're gonna have a little bit more weight on the front tire and quicken up the steering a bit as well. It's something that you and I were talking about doing. And there's so much stability in the suspension, in the tires, in the length of the chassis in the first place. I really don't know that that sharp position is gonna be too sharp. Sure. But the beauty is the adjustments there. And I want to I want to try it out. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Well, we've I mean, we found it a great match for the sort of technical alpine backcountry trails here at Mount Buller. Mm. Um, but obviously we've got to go home. Unfortunately, uh, you've got to go back to Newcastle uh, with the Levo. What's next for you and this bike? What are you planning? Yeah, well, where I live, I do a lot of riding on my Levo, a lot of motor trails, a lot of backcountry stuff, a lot of big missions out in the middle of nowhere, but also like riding a general mountain bike park. So I'm going to experiment a lot with that geometry, try to find a balance between agility and stability through some of that geometry adjustment, mm -hmm. and then dive in a bit deeper with the suspension. There's a, you've got air volume, you've got air pressure, you've got low, high speed compression, low, high speed rebound in the fork and the shock. <laughs> so there's a much. Lot, there's, a lot, there's a lot to get your head around, and that's gonna take a bit of time, and I'm really looking forward to delving a bit deeper and just seeing how versatile this bike is, because I feel like they may have gone 
up, upper size, but at the same time they've future-proofed themselves. So that there is so much flexibility for different riders and different terrain with all that adjustability. And yeah, I mean, that's the type of stuff you're paying for as well with a bike like this, because it's expensive. <laughs> yeah, which probably brings us to the next point. <laughs> this is uh, the most expensive bike we've ever tested. Mm. Uh, I mean, it's a remarkable machine, but there are only two models at the time of launch. There's the Levo S-Works, which is 23,000, it's nearly 24 grand. Yeah. And there's this bike here, the Levo Pro. This is just under 20 grand, $19,800 Australian at the time of launch. Um, this is the entry level spec effectively. Um, so we expect Specialized to be bringing out a wider range of models. We expect there to be an expert comp, um, hopefully alloy as well to bring, bring the price of entry down. Um, there's no denying it's a very, very expensive bike but it is also the highest performing e-mountain bike that mm. we've ever tested. It's the smoothest, it's the quietest, the suspension is fantastic, there's a ton of adjustability in it. The Mastermind TCU is fantastic. <sighs> the yeah. details have been sweated and you can tell when, when you jump on this bike, it's a premium machine. Yeah, there's a lot more detail about this bike in the full review over at flowmountainbike.com. If you've not read it already, make sure you go to the website. We've put a link in the video description below for you. You guys might have some questions about this bike. There's a good chance that they'll be already answered in the review, so make sure you check that out if you haven't. But if you do have any more questions for us, we've been spending a load of time on this bike here at Mount Buller, and we'd love to answer those questions. If we can, drop those into the comments below, and uh, we'll do our best to answer them for you as we go along. And that's it from us up in Mount Buller as part of the Ride High Country test sessions round two. Stay tuned uh, for future adventures mm -hmm. as we take bikes to cool parts of uh, cool parts of Victoria. Nice. We hope you've enjoyed the video, guys. We'll see you next time. You. So cold. So cold. <laughs>